All right, hey everybody, uh, welcome to Go Bold. I am here with Chris Gillen of Firestorm Solutions. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's lovely to get a chance to talk to you, Joey. Thank you, you as well, Chris. <laughs> uh, so you guys have quite an innovative solution here uh, and a mock-up right mm -hmm. behind you. Mm -hmm. um, this mock-up is a platform called the Thunder Wasp. You got it. Right, uh, so tell me about the genesis of the Thunder Wasp, and where you guys are located, what you're trying to do. Absolutely, well, I, I'd like to say that the story for the genesis of Fire Swarm and this uh, incredible vehicle you see behind me was, was a happy story. But it's not. It actually started with our founder's house burning down in the 2023 Gun Lake Fire. Um, and in that fire, he and 50 of his neighbors lost their homes. Uh, but he was an aerospace engineer, uh, a man named Alex, and he uh, realized out of that that he saw a problem. It's a problem I think anyone in Canada has seen. We just don't have enough assets and resources to throw at the problem of wildfire. I think we all see that, especially at night, especially in those heavy smoke conditions, especially in those areas where we're going to be putting so many pious lives at risk. Uh, and he came with this very simple proposition. What if we could, instead of just using what we traditionally think of as drones for, um, for reconnaissance and surveillance and overview, what if we could use it for a direct attack? Actually be able to suppress fire by dropping water or dropping fire retardants on it to actually help to directly solve the problem while keeping the pilot safe and adding the ability for nighttime operations. Uh, with that, we uh, work together with our wonderful partners in Sweden, ACC Innovations, to bring you the Thunder Wasp. Now, the Thunder Wasp is uh, an incredibly huge vehicle. I know it can be hard to see, but literally I can, can't even uh, stretch my arms halfway down. You know, one of these pylons is basically my wingspan right. on there. It gives you a sense of the size of that. And that size is important because it gives us the ability to carry 400 liters of water or 100 gallons of water using the exact same equipment that you would use on a helicopter, the Bambi bucket. The Bambi bucket. Anyone right. who has ever watched uh, uh, helicopters uh, attacking a fire are very familiar with those buckets. And now we can do that with an uncrewed vehicle, with a, with a vehicle where we can keep the pilot safe and on the ground. So we've developed that together. We are in production now, and going, this vehicle is going out to the first clients. And it comes with some amazing statistics uh, around it. Not only the 400 kilograms, 400 liters of carrying capacity, but flight times uh, that uh, range from completely under load of about 90 minutes up to four hours uh, and, and beyond out, uh, when it's without load on that. Uh, and, uh, flights, uh, again, very much like helicopters, we're looking at about 20,000 feet above ground level that it can fly. Extreme conditions, plus to minus 40 degree Celsius. It is really designed to be a workhorse vehicle that while, you know, fire was the first problem, the problem that we so desperately wanted to solve, what we've ended up with is a, a multi-purpose vehicle, a flying pickup truck, a mule of the sky, that can carry whatever you want, wherever you want to go in, in some of the harshest conditions in the world. Really, really impressive. Um, and so um, you're mentioning that you're in production. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know if you're able to share your launch customer at the moment. I, I, I probably not. Um, uh, let's just say that it is a, a, a national government. Okay. Has purchased it for national government purposes. Wow. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And so uh, where is this platform being produced? Uh, Absolutely. So this is being produced with our partners over in Sweden. Okay. Um, so uh, they do the, 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 the base chassis there. Mm -hmm. um, we then add our fire mission kit and our other readiness, as well as the intelligence that goes on it. So all of the software that runs this machine is developed here in Canada, and it's developed by our team. Uh, that allows us to do the pickup, the drop off, and the swarming, so that one pilot can uh, pilot up to five of these vehicles at a time. Uh, by just monitoring it because the AI on board takes care of the rest. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. 
And so um, what type of propulsion are you guys using for Thunder, uh, Thunder Wasp? Yeah, that's an excellent question. It's a gas turbine engine. Okay. Uh, so the reason we're getting these incredible stats is because we're using the same technology that's tried and true in the helicopter industry. It's decades of, of experience and expertise on it, deep understanding on, on the reliability, um, maintenance, how to make these things work in extreme environments. Mm -hmm. And because we're taking that, uh, that well-understood technology, but now applying it to a brand new platform, that's where the evolution comes, but that's also why we have the high confidence around the reliability. Really interesting, and so, um, I would imagine that, you know, this is a large platform, mm -hmm. so, you know, to get it on site, um, I imagine it's modular, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, bolt it together. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have some metrics on how long that might take. I do. Yeah. 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 So uh, under 15 minutes from in the trailer to flying. Wow. Yeah. Holy um, and that's from that's from real testing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes. That, uh, yeah, that's absolutely. And what type of uh, human footprint do you need to uh, to operate it? Like, I don't mean, it, you know, you mentioned that mm -hmm. there's the autonomous aspect to it yep. in terms of uh, actually operating it, mm -hmm. but to to field it, uh, how many people do you need to, well, you, uh, to get this You going? need either two hardy lads or three, uh, three, uh, uh, three people to move it out and get it assembled. Sure. Um, and then from there, single operator fly. And then you will obviously need a maintainer or maintenance team uh, to do both the, the daily maintenance and your annual maintenance on the, on the vehicle. And that might be the same person, it might be somebody else within your organization, depending right. on how it's set up. Right. So clearly, you know, this, the genesis of this was that unfortunate experience yeah. of yeah. fires. Um, but with the size and the payload capacity that you've got here, um, that speaks to the potential of other other roles that that um, that Thunder Wasp could do. Yes. Um, have you guys explored other other um, uses? We this? are. We are exploring other uses. Now we're passionate about solving the problem of wildfire. Um, that's the literally the the spark that lit the flame that started the company, um, and uh, you know that is the mission that's drawn us all together as part of this. Having said that. We have ended up with a general purpose vehicle that has multiple uses across a range of industries from defense to obviously heavy industry, oil and gas mining, forestry, um, agriculture, and a whole range of other, and a whole range of other uh, use cases that we've seen. Obviously, each one of those needs to be tested, validated, you know, and, and certified before we, we deploy on that, mm -hmm. but uh, we've been, very grateful for the amount of interest in all sorts of use cases and the incredible ideas people have come up with for things that they could do with it. Yeah, well, like, I mean, that's, that's, that's the hallmark of a really good platform is, you know, more than one use. Absolutely, right? yeah, right. yeah. And it's, so this essentially is a large, uh, you know, large mule yeah. in, in essence, yeah. right? Like, exactly, yeah. Um, have you looked at other uh, sensors? Uh, to integrate into? Uh, we have, so um, so that goes through our R&D team. They are constantly evaluating a whole range of sensors, uh, whether it's radar systems, LIDAR system, IR cameras, high res cameras. You know, we're every day we're, we're seeing real exciting innovation in Canada and around the world, um, creating new technologies that will go go into this. One of the nice things about this vehicle is, of course, the platform is designed for long life, 20 plus years that you could probably be flying this, but the technology that iterates fast is easy to replace. Right, right, absolutely. Well, Chris, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with me. This has been uh, this has been a wonderful surprise. Uh, you know, I, I was not expecting to see you guys here, um, but what a what an interesting platform, and, and uh, clearly there's uh, there's need for it around the world now. So uh, quite timely. Well, thank you very much, and we really appreciate it. And hello to all your fan subscribers. Please click the like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, on the next uh, podcast here. You are a gentleman. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. My thank pleasure. You. Have a great day. Yeah, have a great day, and best of luck to you guys. Best of luck to you as thank well. You. Thanks again, Thank Jody. you very much. <laughs>